Look at me for a minute, Adam. He's wide awake. He's talking. I can't believe it. Look at, look at Junior. Look at how happy he is. He looks great. They all do. Stuart, say Adam. Did I hear someone say Stuart? I... I found Stuart and brought him back to Adam. I, I saved my husband's life. No. I have to go tell. You almost killed Stuart, Arlene. You didn't save anyone. David, you... You dare to stand here and say that you saved Adam and you almost killed Stuart and kept him away from all of us? Um, you drank yourself into a stupor, Arlene, and got behind the wheel of a car probably for the hundredth time, didn't you? You got behind the wheel of a car, drunk, and you hit Stuart and you left him lying on the road, lying there to bleed to death. The night Arlene ran into the community center was the same night Stuart disappeared. You mowed down a man and then what did you do, Arlene? You drove away like nothing was wrong, like nothing ever happened. Dear good Lord, how do you live with it yourself, Arlene? Tell me that, will you? You said that night that you did it. Again, but you didn't say what it was, because you were so drunk. You were so drunk, you couldn't even finish a sentence. Or did you just shut up, you know, so you could cover your tracks? Look, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't when remember are you gonna anything stop? That. When are you going to stop? When you finally manage to kill somebody, you stupid ignorant. Brooke, let's Let get me. out of here. I don't want to do this now. Okay? I'm not heartless. I'm not. I... Look, I woke up the next morning and I didn't remember anything about Stuart or hitting him or... Look, I, I didn't even know what happened to, to him until I found out that he was at that Queen of Hearts cafe in the desert weeks later. He was out there? That place in Nevada. What, what was he doing all the way out there? Hey, everybody. Adam's feeling much better. Hey, your dad. Stuart, you are one good-looking guy. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Dixie. Hi. <laughs> we all missed you so much. And you have no idea what it was like without me. Oh. You know, I don't really want to talk about all the things we thought we lost. Let's just... I just want to forget all about all that stuff, okay? Oh, no, Stuart, well, you can't forget about what Arlene did. Mm. And I know I'll never forget. Because she has to pay for what she did, Stuart, and you're the only one who can make her pay. So make her pay. a cell phone that Stuart can call Lieutenant Fry with? Oh, no, Mary, it's okay. No, please, Stuart. No, I'm, I'm not calling the Look, police. Look, you have to call them. No, I can't. Man, I have to do what I what I feel is right in my heart. Do you remember the whole time that I was I was alone, walking around not knowing who I was, trying to, to feel the things that I thought I was supposed to feel? Because the, the things that I was really feeling I couldn't remember in my head. And, and it, was, it was driving me nuts. And then all of a sudden, I, out of the air, I painted your picture, the, the Queen of Hearts, and that made me feel so good. But it made me so angry. Because I knew I was this close to knowing what I was supposed to feel. I just couldn't get to it. And then Darlene came along. And she, she made me remember things. Noises and... and Voices. But, Stuart, why didn't she bring you home, back to us? I guess because she was afraid. And because she wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to find my own way. My own way home. Don't you understand? Blaming Arlene isn't going to do anything for us. I'm here, we're together, everything, everything worked out exactly the way it should. But Stuart, you weren't supposed to get hurt, you weren't supposed to lose your memory. And all of that happened because of Arlene. Mary, I was lost before Arlene ever hit me with that car. I had turned my back on my brother. 
at a time when he needed me most. I'd stop feeling. And I had to learn how all over again. The hard way. Arlene. I don't blame you. I, I want to thank you. Oh, my God. You, you brought me back here in time to save my brother's life. That must have been terrifying for you. I'll never forget what you did, Annie Oakley. Never. Your dad told you that he loved you, huh? He's changed, Mom. He's a better person than he used to be. Well, that's great. I'm really happy for you. You must be hungry. What do you say we go get something to eat and then you can come back and spend some more time with your dad? Please. Oh, great. Okay, go go ahead. I love you. Love you too. See you in a bit. Tired. If you like, you can take a nap in my office. The couch is really comfortable. Thanks. Um, I'm okay. I'm not tired. I'm gonna go say hi to Stuart. Okay. Excuse me. You care about her, don't you? Well, she was a patient of mine once, and now she works for I me. I get so. it. I get it loud and clear. But here's the thing. She's got a family, he loves her a lot. And we do a really good job of looking after her, so you don't have to. You understand? Ted. Yeah. Hi, I got Marion's message to come right down. What the, what's going on? I thought Uncle Adam was in critical condition. Scott. You better hang on to something, because that is Nat. Son, I'm about ready to go home. You want to come? Yeah, I'm gonna stop by the office first, though. Um, I'll see you in a bit, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hold on. See you. Sorry. Let's go, loser. Yeah, you drive. <laughs> 